All right, so why don't we just call this Mail Friday? Guess what came in today, guys? Hey guys, good morning. So um, it's a little early this, well, it's like 7.30 or whatnot. Um, and I have somewhere to go, hence my dress is higher. Shout out to anybody who plays Destiny. Got my Destiny shirt on. Um, anyways, um, new parts came in. I got the front toe hook. Um, and I really want to put that on before I get moving. So should be a little quick, you know, five minute install. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the exact tools you need. So let's go. Um, so as you can see, I have the toe hook. Um, and I do have a few wrenches. However, I don't have the size correct appropriate one. Um, the largest one I have is a 17 millimeter. So if you have something larger that'll fit this uh, toe hook, that'll probably help. But in this case, I'm actually just going to use an adjustable one. Should do the job just fine. Um, obviously, it'd be preferred to have one that's the exact size, but you know, simple, and we're just working with what we have. So let's get straight to it. All right, so we're at the front of the car real quick, and we're just gonna go down here to the front grill. You see this little cap right here? You're actually gonna turn left. Um, it might be hard, so you you know gotta put put some force into it. Once it's at that diagonal point, you could just literally pull it out. Um, and then it is being held by this, so obviously you're gonna have to cut that. I don't know how you guys might feel about that, but um, yeah, it's just a necessity if you're planning on having the toe hook and having this off. Or you could remove this. Um, you'll see that it's attached by a little plastic, so you could probably remove it and not damage it. I'm gonna try to attempt that right now. All right, so as you can see, I basically removed the cap. This is the only little plastic piece that's holding it together. So I just inked it out. Uh, you could cut it if you really could care less for it. Uh, but I'm holding it just in case, you know, I decide to remove it for whatever reason. The tow hook is pretty big in comparison, size-wise. That just lets you know. Huge bolt. But you'll just screw that in and then tighten it up right here where my pinky's out. All right, so this is a finished product. The only time you actually need the wrench is to adjust this nut to make sure that it's, you know, hanging down the way you want it to. Uh, so you just have to kind of play with that a bit. Um, but you can actually hand tighten this. I had to two-hand it in order to get it as tight as possible. Um, and yeah, it's correct. Um, obviously, you can find different uh, toe hooks. Um, I bought this one from Turbo Socks because the actual thread is perfect for the size of the Veloster. There's some that are made for, you know, other vehicles that you can find on eBay. So um, I would suggest going either through them or SoCal Garage Works to get one that fits right for you. And they obviously have a multitude of colors. Um, but yeah, it's on there. It's sturdy. Um, shouldn't come off. If any of you guys are scared of theft, um, in the forums people have talked about putting a little bit of super glue on the thread um, to, you know, make sure it's in there. Uh, it's up to you guys, basically. But that part is finished. And now let's get to the uh, LED turn signal bulbs. All right, now if any of you guys have been following any of my previous videos, uh, you'll know that I discovered that to replace the amber turn signals, there's actually a cap right here. Oops. And it's as easy as twist off, pull out, replace bulb, insert, and twist back on and lock. If you guys missed any of the other videos and you guys were wondering how to remove the ambers in case you guys decided to go with amber deletes as well and you're having the same problem I did with <coughs> excuse me with having them bleed through at nighttime you'll just see that same thing for both sides you just twist out pull out remove bulb twist back in uh, and lock now these just to let you guys know I actually completely removed the bulbs so there is no bulb uh, don't worry it doesn't give you any kind of warning light doesn't affect anything negatively you can literally not have bulbs because they're quite literally just parking lights so anyways let's get started okay so I twisted them unlocked literally just gonna pull out you can see this nasty orange bulb so I'm gonna take it out real quick and replace it with a nice LED one all right so this is my LED bulb I already twisted off the other one and put it in the uh, well I'm about to put the LED bulb so see these little nodes right here you're basically just gonna Insert them where they slide in, push down, twist, and it's locked. And now we're just going to insert it back in. All right, guys, so it's reinserted back in. If you're having problems with it, just twist it around a bit until it kind of just slides back in easy. And then lock. You heard that? And done. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, but before I do that, I'm going to show you guys the difference and the look, obviously. Actually, let's just go straight to it. So, no more orange bulb. You guys have clarity all throughout. For reference, I'll show you the other side. So we're at the other side, and as you can see, there's the amber still. Some of you might not mind this, but I kind of like the clear look. The LED bulbs will still flash amber, so it's just nice and clear. And then this is demonstrating on these are the hazards on, just so you see. So this is the stock amber one, and we're going to go over to the LED bulb that I just installed. Much brighter, and as you can see when it flashes off, it's nice and clear. So to finish this off, we're going to do the same thing to the other side, and we are done. And success, the other side is in. So now we just have clear amber turn signals for the front and the rear. Just makes it look so much cleaner, especially with the amber deletes. No more orange. If you have a, you know, a white or black, obviously it'll pop out a lot. Regardless of what color you have, it'll pop out. But yeah, there we go. This might be a little hard to see, but this is the bonus round since we have so much time. So this one's probably one of the easiest interior bulbs because there's a little clip, oops, right here where my finger's at. Um, so you're literally gonna press in, pull out, and I'll show you what it's like once it's out. So you can probably see it right now, but once it's out, it's just gonna hang because it is connected. Um, if it makes it easier for you to remove the connector, that's fine. Silly me to think this would be easy. Um, so I had to unplug it. There's actually these clips, right, one right here and one right here that you have to push down and then pull out the little black portion. Um, best way to go at it is with a flathead screwdriver pushing down and pushing it in all the way to basically alleviate the clip. Because otherwise, if you see this little metal uh, inner portion right here uh, for the contact, uh, that clip gets stuck on that and it won't let you slide it out. So obviously it's about to pop off now, so we'll go ahead and replace the bulb. Okay, and that's the black part removed, the little cover. You're literally just gonna yank out that bulb, well, be careful, and then put in the new LED one. Um, and make sure, obviously, to place the nodes facing up, because this is where the light emits out of, not down here, so yeah. Also, I can't stress enough to make sure you guys do your research and figure out what bulb size you need. The right one, as you can see, it's a little bit smaller, and that's actually meant for the hatch. So, yeah, just heads up. Anyways, with the bulb now removed, it's just time to insert the new one. So as to demonstrate, the heat sink, because this is one of the brighter ones, is facing you, while the actual LED nodes are facing down on this clear side. This one was kind of a little bit more of a pain because the stock bulb actually has kind of like this little metal flake here. I'll show you guys real quick. Has these little, I don't know if you can see that little tip. Has it on both sides, which help hold it in place. Uh, whereas the LED bulb is your typical and doesn't have that so It looks like it's being bent back and it even looks a little angled should be fine because this uh, right side right here locks in place But um, just be careful. I'd suggest doing your best to push back the little uh, Copper portion. I believe it's copper uh, to make sure that you know, it doesn't come loose and just fall off during a bump nice super bright in there you can't really tell the difference right now because it's uh, the day, but you can see that it's illuminating quite brightly here, whereas it was actually quite dark earlier, and you could just generally see more in the trunk. So yeah, that does it for the hatch. So update, I was given the wrong bulb, uh, the other one was slightly larger, uh, so disregard anything I said about size differences in the hatch portion, but don't worry, we'll get it swapped out and then we'll put the right one in. Round two, got the right bulb this time, so let's take this apart again. Uh, you're going to go ahead and get the little screwdriver and try to put it in at an angle. Uh, it is now in, and we'll just pop it out. So I know I didn't show this last time, but the best angle to do this at is actually from back here, because there's these little uh, clips that clip in. So you'll just pull that out, and then you can easy pull it out, and then obviously unplug it. Now step two, now that this is unplugged, is to put in your little screwdriver uh, in between the plastic uh, clear portion and this painted part, and then just remove this cover, and obviously put in the new bulb. So let's see that. Okay, so we removed it, took out the old bulb, here's the new LED bulb in, it'll focus. And then we're going to put in the new tab, make sure you pay direction to where the teeth go, 
So you can see there's that little hole right there if it'll focus. And then one right there. Uh, so yeah, just make sure those line up. Last but not least, we're gonna plug this back in and then you're gonna see it hanging and then I'll show you guys how to reinsert it. So I plugged it back in, you see it hanging this way. This is also the way you wanna re, well, make sure it goes back in. But you see these little metal clips right here? So these are gonna go right there and then these tabs will go up here. And then basically just you'll hear a loud click that it's clicked in and you're good to go. All right, so I put it in the tab, not the metal portion first, but these, cause the metal clips will actually just pop in. So you're gonna hear it, it's going in. There we go. They clicked in perfectly. Obviously this isn't going anywhere. And now I'm gonna turn it on. Ooh, LED greatness. This is one of the brighter ones. Again, I bought these from DDM. Uh, I know that AutoZone sells the Sylvania brand, but they're actually not as bright. Um, and for that same reason, that's kind of why I'm not doing the front. Because I actually set off, set, sorry. I actually have the front set up that not to turn on even when the doors open. I only use those when I need to. This is the main one that opens when we open and close the door. So that's it, guys. We're all set. All right, guys. So that's it for the bulb install. Rory Chan over here is uh, complete with some nice LEDs. New shirt because it did take me a whole weekend uh, to get to DDM to replace that dome bolt. But big shout out to them because they warranty their bolts for two years and they've always got my back. They have some of the brightest. So obviously you can buy from wherever you like, eBay, Amazon, AutoZone. Uh, but I'm gonna put links below for DDM. So thanks so much for watching guys. Until the next time, uh, we got some more exciting projects to go. So see you guys next time. Ah, Rory Chan says bye. I cut myself.